DVDs are truly at the late stages of their life. With streaming services seeming all the more invasive to our lives and apparently piracy on the rise as well, physical media sales continue to decline across the 2020s, bringing us closer and closer to relying entirely on the faith that companies will not delete our digital copies of stuff. Which, by the way, they've already actively been doing. Thanks, PlayStation. And as we breach further into this new year, we're seeing further the elements of the future. Not to completely discredit them, of course. Despite the superior Blu-rays being widely available since like 2007, DVDs have continued to be a valuable part of the home entertainment industry and still are widely sold to this day. But it's kind of a dying market, you know? Your average mum isn't a DVD collector, you know? And even I myself, I, I really probably should. I just... I don't. Yet, whether you do collect DVDs or you don't, one thing that you may have noticed from the modern DVDs of the current day is that the selection menus have, uh, to put it kindly, not been quite as inventive as when the DVD was a dominant part of the market, you know? Creativity is clearly dying in every facet. If you're lucky, you'll still get a loose montage of some events of the movie that practically spoil a big chunk of the movie against some suite of the soundtrack. However, on the whole, you're typically getting one still image with some buttons, you know? Riveting. And that's sad, because it's, it's not exactly like the creativity has moved to streaming. I'd love if there were menus that were more interactive there, but who's gonna code that, you know? Wow, look at that, you got some fun button animations on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Wowee, uh, that's about as good as it gets. So let's have a look back on the better times of life, shall we? When DVD releases of old really got it right, because there are some DVD menus I have in my childhood brain that I remember just spending actual hours on for some reason. Even if it was something as bad as the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. So let's have a look at my top five DVD menus off the top of my head to bring back a little bit of that old-fashioned dopamine of when the times were good, eh? So starting off, we have Pixar's Wally. -E. Let's start things off pretty simply with an example that very subtly introduced you to the world and circumstances of the movie. Being able to achieve this is truly one of the best traits of a good DVD menu and is integral to the functionality of it. The world of Wally -E is a pretty interesting one, it's not your standard slice of life. Not only does it need to establish that Earth is empty, the world is dead, there's a little bit of a global warming climate crisis going on, and also now there's a whole new aspect to the science and the fancy world and the axiom and all that business. So how does the menu do it? Well, with Wally's -E menu, we encounter everyone's favorite little robotic loner going through the wastelands of Earth before switching to the perspective of his vision. Literally through his lenses, we then see the projections of BNL commercials setting up the fact that these large cruise ships have headed out to space. Told from a simple, humble perspective that is literally the protagonist of the movie. It works out nicely, you know, he is our guide into this universe. Like many examples, it manages to set up the world and perspective of the story specifically without taking too much of the setup that the movie does on its own terms. It doesn't just show us the first five minutes of the movie, you press play, and then you have to go through those same five minutes again, you know? And that kind of vibe of ruining the setup to a movie is something that so many DVD menus did actually get wrong back in the day. Or it would just outright spoil the later elements of the movie, like a montage that shows some big battle scenes from the third act, you know? I'm looking at you, modern DVDs. But with this one, you get the tease that an out of space adventure may be on the cards, you don't get any footage from that, and that's brilliant. From the DVD menu to the moment Wally hitchhikes on that rocket, you stay firmly on Earth, unaware of the big wide world out there and the very chubby feet you get to see for free. There's also the slight implication that the selection options in themselves could be one of these holograms, which is just another great integrated touch. Next up, we're going for a movie that, honestly, most people probably would have forgotten about. It's 2003's Piglet's Big Movie. I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember a lot about this movie. However, on research, I've gotta say that this one considered its audience very well. You see, this DVD menu has a narrator. You heard me right. A narrator presents the menu as a storytelling guide, which I don't think you see very often, to be honest. Not from what I've found, anyway. So very calmly, she takes the viewer into a room where the characters are busy drawing. She then introduces them to the menu options, which is on one of these drawings that then comes to life. The art style for which I really like. The narrator then explains what each button does in very simple yet clear detail. You see, 2003 was a time when the number of households with DVD players was still 
still growing, and this would have likely been amongst the very first DVDs that many children came across. I didn't! I was too busy watching bloody Space Jam or something. And even then, that was on VHS, so, you know, I, I was very late to the DVD game. But in your average household, and with Winnie the Pooh's audience being largely very young children, this is a really clever device that both adapts the friendly storytelling format of the Winnie the Pooh movies, whilst also being a great My First DVD experience for toddlers and young school children learning how to use a DVD, and then realising that that skill is absolutely useless 20 years later. I have many bad things to say about Disney, but their DVD menu game is certainly not one of them. At least back in the old days. So next up, we're heading back to Pixar for a little bit with Ratatouille. This is where we go slightly beyond what the menu looks like, although that does also have a factor here. Despite not having any presence in the movie itself, the highly stylized 2D animation from Ratatouille's end credits just seem to fit with the movie's vibe. From how it looks to the creative way the rats use the food as everyday objects, it's just a great animated sequence in itself. Which is why I love that the style returns for the DVD menu. In fact, we get to see Gusto's restaurant really realized in this animation style, starting with the iconic sign before drifting into the kitchen. Whilst initially looking like the motions of the kitchen are pretty repetitive, you can then spot the silhouettes of rats running along the ground. Immediately, the whole vibe of the movie's there, whilst not spoiling any of it whatsoever. It's just kind of a, a Pinterest board of vibes. Here's a kitchen, here's a bunch of rats, you know? However, what this menu also introduces to the table is the DVD Easter egg. One absolute staple for physical media fans are those little extra nuggets hidden on the DVD. Some are more obvious, like in the case of the other rat-based fare flushed away, where it literally says preview for Shrek the Third in the corner of the bathroom. However, in this case, it's much more subtle. You've got to select down on the remote, find a saucepan. When you click on the saucepan, you'll then find a 1950s style commercial for... Rat poison. Yeah, okay, it's a bit dark. However, it does further contextualize the world of Ratatouille, and it's also just a bit of extra fun that gives you some sense of reward for finding. Rat poison is in the movie in a couple of places. And it's always fun to find a secret, no matter how dark it actually is. In a similar vein, this brings me on to... Welcome to the halfway mark of the video. Thank you for watching this far in. If you're interested in more, come subscribe. Or let me know other DVD menus that stand out to you. I might cover more of these as I research more DVD menus. It's a fun little nostalgic thing to talk about, you know? If you're interested, let me know down in the YouTube comments or over on our Discord. And let's get back to some of the best top 5 DVDs that I remember off the top of my head. Enjoy. In a similar vein, this brings me on to... Hot Fuzz. As more child-friendly fairs require more fun and interactive features, there's inevitably been a lot of animated movies on this list. Plus, you know, we're mostly an animated movie channel. It makes sense. However, it seems weirdly fitting that Hot Fuzz would be a more adult movie to really go for it with the DVD. Danny owns the ultimate DVD collection, after all. So initially, the menu starts out fairly pedestrian, with a CGI version of the police station presenting the options as notices on the wall. However, after 10 seconds of dialogue pulled directly from the movie, Bin being thrown across the office included, a report comes through on the police radio that was specifically recorded for the menu. It features an officer attempting to clarify his reports by spelling out the words he's trying to say. Only he can't spell very well and makes an absolute dog's dinner of what he's trying to say. There's also some nice visual nods to the movie around the office desk, including Danny's birthday cake, still lit of course, as this is the police station that keeps a giant sea mine in the evidence room after all. But if you look closely, you can also see a post-it note that references Danny's question of... Is it true that there is a place in a man's head that if you shoot it, it will blow up? Like the movie itself, the DVD menu also contains a couple well-hidden Easter eggs. The easiest one to find is, if you go up to the Hot Fuzz logo on the board, clicking on it reveals a couple alternative takes of the fence jumping sequence, which shows you how they pulled the shot off. However, the super sneaky one that gets this higher on the list is hidden much more extremely. If you go down to the languages option, click on the left button three times, followed by the right button once, if done correctly, you'll get an exclusive outtake not part of the main blooper reel. And everybody loves a good blooper, you know? But it's not so much the blooper that's the main highlight, it's just the fact that it's actually really genuinely well hidden. As for less hidden features, one big highlight includes Edgar Wright and Quentin Tarantino's movie commentary. But let's get back to Pixar once again, classic animation. For now, it's Finding Nemo. 
Yeah, evidently a lot of the best ones are Pixar, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were directly involved with the releases. They were amongst the first to release two disc special editions for bonus materials, which was great for young nerds like me. And these bonus discs also had a lot of the earlier shorts, like Knick Knack, that were prior to Pixar's theatrical movies, which before YouTube was the only way you could see them. However, the reason why I'm putting Finding Nemo so high is for a very particular reason. When you first arrive at the menu, you're lowered beneath the ocean depth to the tranquil movements of the Great Barrier Reef, accompanied by Thomas Newman's whimsical score. You know how this sounds, just by the looks. However, if you press on the fish in the bottom corner, the menu will present a selection of fully animated virtual aquariums to leave on the background. These peaceful and relaxing features were unlike anything found on a DVD menu at this point, as this was long before the days of 10-hour ambient YouTube videos and the Netflix virtual fireplace. It all started with a DVD menu in 2003, and I think you can even find this now, again, on Disney Plus as a way to calm down your screaming iPad baby children. Truly, it was incredibly ahead of its time. So let's switch back to some more live action with Star Wars Classic. Uh, technically still Disney, but it's 2004, okay? The 2004 special edition release of the Star Wars original trilogy has a somewhat mixed reputation among fans. Whilst it had the best picture quality of display of any Star Wars release at that point, it also saw George Lucas doubling down on pointless additional CGI nuggets, such as random aliens walking in front of shots, somehow making the Jabba's Palace musical number even worse, and further denying Han Solo the privilege of a cold-blooded murder. However, one thing that doesn't get spoken about enough when it comes to this release is how the DVD menus change to a different movie location every time you put it in. Each disc has at least three alternative DVD menus that interchange each time. I have no idea if this is at random or in some kind of sequence, but there's no denying that this is a really inventive approach to a DVD menu and just adds to making the world of Star Wars seem all that more massive, large and elusive. You never know where you're going to end up because there's so many sights to see. But now it's time for the King of the Hill. The reason why you're watching this video, it's of course DreamWorks' Shrek 2. Finally, not a Disney movie. This movie is as tattooed to my childhood memory as Shrek 2 is itself. Even people who have never paid attention to DVD menus as a kid remember this one. Even taking out the far, far away idol bonus feature, including Simon Cow, this DVD is truly iconic. It's quite simple. Donkey irritating the other characters, each in their own little boxes. However, in a world where they could have literally just played a montage of the movie on repeat, the fact that they got the star-studded voice cast back in to record a specially written sequence for the DVD menu has had my undying respect for the Shrek team. And I have in my long-term memory just, Shrek, Shrek. It's, it's just in there now. Cheers. It would wake me up after I fell asleep to watching this DVD. Now Shrek 2 is great on its own terms, but there's no doubt in my mind that this menu adds a whole other layer of nostalgia, and it's Shrek. He loves his layers. And though obviously not quite as good as its predecessor, I even remember the Shrek the Third DVD menu as having a specific element where all the characters gave you child-rearing advice, and for whatever reason, that's, that was in there. Uh, it's a thought. I even remember Gingy very specifically saying, Be very, very careful over spilled milk. Okay. These DVD menus only scratch the surface of how much craftsmanship was put into these discs back in the day. There's a reason why we remember them so well, and the fact that their absence is really felt now. However, unfortunately, with modern streaming interfaces, there just doesn't seem to be any sensical way of implementing that level of creativity. So much of the internet bandwidth needs to be prioritized for actually streaming the movie that a more animated play menu would be counterproductive. That said, as a VR headset user, I wonder if the idea of an uber-inventive home screen of some sort is completely dead. You see, the home menu on a VR headset in itself is a virtual environment of its own. It could be as crazy as a cave looking onto a waterfall whilst having all the selection options hovering around you. Whilst I can't say there's a direct connection between the two, you can at least see how one may have led to the other. Or similarly, with the new MetaQuest 3, maybe there'll be some integration to augmented reality and some sort of DVD menu fun, you know? The, or the only thing that comes up to my mind is those sheets of Squidward hanging out a window, but done in VR as if he's there being like, Are you gonna play my movie yet? 
and it's just if you have the Spongebob movie he's there in the corner of your room insulting you until you press play. The DVD menu and of course DVDs themselves may be dying out but maybe the principle of a landing interface that immerses and excites its audience isn't totally dead it simply evolved as we all unwillingly shoot further into the future. But for now I'll just end it off there. My name's been Daz. You didn't really care. What was your favorite DVD menus that you can remember? You got any really niche ones or is it is, is everyone just Shrek 2? You know, let me know because if there's enough interest, maybe I'll do another video about some of the worst. Uh, we'll see. You didn't really care and I'll see you in a little bit.